grace to you and peace in the name of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is a joy to be greeting you on this Sunday, November the 27th, 2022, the first Sunday of Advent as this service of worship emanates from the sanctuary of St. John African Methodist Episcopal Church located on the corner of East 40th Street and Central Avenue in Cleveland, Ohio, where I, the Reverend Henry F. Curtis IV, serve as pastor. So as we welcome each and every one of you gathered here in the sanctuary, and as we welcome each and every one of you who are worshiping with us online, let us stand and join the choir in singing our opening song, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. now sing our doxology, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For they have not forced to better than the thousand. I have rather been born in the house of my God than to dwell in tents of wickedness. Because of the house of, of because of the house, O Lord our God, I will seek thy good. The Lord has been planted in the house of the Lord, shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house, Lord. I have loved thy habitation, the place where thou honor dwellest. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O strength of the Lord and his song, for he has done our hearts with strength. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth sings praise. Amen. You may be seated as we have our opening prayer this morning. Uh, we had a wonderful Thanksgiving last week, and so we are truly thankful today. And so today, let us all go to the to God in prayer and be thankful for all that He's brought us through <laughs> this time this year. The Sarah's song that says, We've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord. And Lord, we say thank you because you have brought us safely from last Sunday through the week of last week of Thanksgiving till today. 
And we say thank you because we were able to wake up in our right mind and clothes it on our back and a place to live. And we say thank you. And now, Lord, as we prepare to enter into this Advent season, let us go to you in prayer and say thank you, Lord, because it is because of you that we're here today. It's not about the presence underneath the tree. It's not about the gifts that we hope to give or get. It's all about you. You are the reason for this season. And today's word is hope. We have hope, Lord, that you are going to take care of us. We have belief, we have faith yes. that you are going to take care of us and do all that you said you can do to us and do for us. And for that, we are giving you thanks in advance. And now, Lord, we ask that you look around the country, Lord, there's lots of killings, shooting, mass murdering, whatever, all those dangerous things that the devil is making right, wrong, and wrong right. We ask that you remove all of that and make everything uh, pleasing in your sight, Lord. We ask that you do that right now, and we are believing it. For it says, claim it, name it, claim it, and receive it. And we're doing just that. And now, Lord, we ask that you look upon us as a church family. I don't know what they're staying in of or whatever they are. Be it a financial blessing, a spiritual blessing, a healing blessing. We ask that you bless us with those things right now. And then again, Lord, we there's death among us in our families. We ask that you we give those families our strength as they can go on in their time. Without you, there is no other. But with you, we can stand against all things. We now know what else again that we look at. We look upon everyone. We ask that you bless us with the things that we need, not just the things that we want. And now, Lord, we're going to make this a, a big prayer of Thanksgiving. Thank you for all that you've done for us. And Lord, we say, we love you, we praise you, and we give you all the honor that you deserve. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Tatiana DuBose. Hope, the first Sunday of Advent. In the days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains. 
the season of Advent beckons us to turn our attention to the coming, to the expectation, to the waiting. Come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. In due time, they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they study war anymore. Come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The time is surely coming, says the Lord. God will establish God's reign in the earth and in our lives. We pray that we do not sit idly by, but that we are enabled to work alongside God as co-creators. We light, this. We light the candle of hope and we remember our commitment to hope as a discipline. Let us wait with expectation, work with hope, and serve with an eye towards the not yet. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Let the church say amen. Amen. Let us stand for the scripture reading this morning. Our scripture this morning comes from Matthew chapter 24, verses 36 through 44. And we will be reading from the Revised Standard Version. And it reads, But of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but of the Father only. As were the days of Noah, so will the coming of the Son of Man. But as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day when Noah entered the ark. Mm -hmm. And they did not know until the flood came and swept them all away. So we will be coming of the Son of Man. Then two men will be in the field. One is taken and one is left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One is taken and one is left. Watch therefore, for you know not, for you do not know that on what day the Lord is coming. But know this, that if the household has known on what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have watched and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. From all that dwells. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. 
Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophet. <laughs>
Now it's time for the Word of God. Now it's time for the Word of God. So we have our own pastor, senior pastor of St. John A.M.U. Church, who's ready to bring forth the Word. So his name is the Reverend Henry F. Curtis IV. So he's ready, he's on fire, he's energized, and he's on, on the spot for the Lord. So prepare your minds and hearts to receive the Word coming from him this morning. So rise and give, just give him a hand praise as he comes forward. God is here this morning. Amen? Amen. We thank and praise God for God's spirit in this place, and we thank and praise God for each and every one of you who are gathered here with us this morning. Good morning to you, and we also wish a special good morning to each and every one of you who are worshiping with us online. Please be sure to say good morning to us in the chat and good morning to one another, and if you have not also already done so, please be sure to like us and to follow us on Facebook and on YouTube. We especially welcome any persons here visiting for the very first time or for persons who are here with us for the first time in a long time. Welcome home and we pray, pray that you had a very happy and healthy Thanksgiving weekend. Amen. Amen. I also want to uh, personally thank each and every one of you who accompanied us over to St. James AME Church on Sunday, uh, last Sunday. Thank you for that time, and we also want to publicly thank St. James. If you didn't go there, you missed out on a good dinner. Amen. But we thank God uh, for the relationship that we have with our sister congregation. Today is the first Sunday of Advent. As you see, the altar is adorned in purple. Uh, it's a sign for us to go through this solemn season to get ourselves ready for the uh, coming of the newborn king. So our scripture rest lesson was read for your hearing by Brother Presley from Matthew chapter 24, verses 36 through 44. And while we will review the entirety of the text, I point your attention to verse 42, where Jesus says, Watch therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. I'd like for you to think with me and pray with me this morning, Christian friends, on the theme relevant to our subject matter, be ready for his arrival. Be ready for his arrival. Let us pray. Lord, speak to me that I may speak in living echoes of thy tongue. As thou hast sought, so let me seek thine erring children, lost and lone. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Christ's holy name we pray, amen. Let me begin today by wishing each and every one of you a happy new year. You've been looking at me perplexed, saying, well, Brother Pastor, it's only November the 27th. We still have five more weeks before the ball drops on Times Square. But if you remember what I told you last week, the first Sunday of Advent begins the new year in the Christian church. So happy Christian New Year. It is but the first Sunday of Advent, but we again mark the beginning of a new Christian year. These next four weeks, we will reflect upon Jesus' coming. And we prepare for the coming of Jesus in two ways. There are two ways that we prepare for his coming. Number one, his nativity. Somebody say nativity. 
That's Jesus' birth, the incarnation when God became flesh and entered human history. We, we prepare for his nativity, but we also prepare for his return. Somebody say return. How many of you know he's coming back again? And we have a fancy Greek word that I've taught you, and I'll say it again, the parousia, his second coming. So during Advent, we anticipate the nativity, and we also anticipate the parousia, the time when Jesus will come the second time with power and with glory, and he shall judge the quick and the dead. So Advent... It comes from a Latin word, Adventus, A-D-V-E-N-T-U-S. Adventus is Latin, which simply means arrival. And to better understand the, the word Advent and the context of, of why we celebrate these four weeks before the nativity of our Lord, you have to go back to ancient Rome. And in ancient Rome, they did not speak English, but rather they spoke Latin. And in ancient Rome, the Adventus was a formal ceremony for an emperor's arrival into the city. So when the emperor was coming, they had a ceremony and it was called the Adventus, meaning we're, we're welcoming the arrival of our leader, even today. When a head of state travels to another nation or to a city within his or her own country, there is often much formality and activity surrounding the event. Go back with me to last Sunday as the church year ended with the festival of Christ the King. So now as we come to the first Sunday of the new Christian year, this Advent, this Adventus, it stands to reason that we prepare to receive Jesus, our newborn king, as we enter into this season of Advent, as we enter into this season of preparation, expectation, imagination, anticipation, reconciliation, and dare I say, jubilation. Advent and Christmas ought to bring somebody joy because Jesus is coming. Our newborn king is coming. Our soul's only hope for salvation is on his way. So all we need to do during this time is be ready. Somebody say, be ready. See, we celebrate the Adventus, the Advent, the arrival of Jesus Christ, our Lord. To be sure, welcoming someone as special as Jesus comes with a certain amount of stress. Now that we know that Jesus is coming, we want everything to be just right. But the reality that I want to share with you this morning, church, is this. Everything is not just right, nor will it ever be. You may say, well, Brother Pastor, why do you say that? That's why Jesus is coming. Because everything's not right. And no matter how much we try, we will never get it right. Because we don't have it within ourselves, the ability to be perfect, no matter how fervently we strive for perfection. We don't have it within ourselves, the ability to be holy, no matter how faithfully we strive towards holiness. The good news today is Jesus is coming to perfect us into holiness and in so doing to make us acceptable to stand before God. See, I'm giving you the good news right off the top. Ushers, you can get ready. We can get the offering, give the benediction, and go home. I've already given you the good news. The good news is the joy of Advent, the mystery of the nativity, is that Jesus' arrival comes to bring us salvation, to allow us who are sinful to one day stand in the presence of a holy God. But we cannot get there except we follow Jesus. And in order to do so, we have to be ready. We have to be prepared in mind, body, and in spirit. Because if you look at the biblical record, God took great measure 
to prepare Jesus in such a manner that his earthly life fulfilled the prophecies that foretold him. Jesus was a prepared gift for an unprepared world. Jesus didn't, God didn't just send any old person down here. He specifically prepared Jesus according to what was foretold in the Hebrew scriptures. So a prepared people must be ready to meet a prepared Savior. This holy season of Advent helps us to consider whether we are in a state of preparedness for the coming of Jesus Christ. So the question that we have this morning, church, is this. What does being prepared in the context of Advent and Jesus' coming look like for us? An Old Testament example points us to Noah, whom Jesus references in our text. If you look at the text, look at verses 36 through 39 of our gospel lesson. Jesus says, but of that day and hour, no one knows. Not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father only. As were the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day when Noah entered the ark. And they did not know until the flood came and swept them all away, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. You might recall hearing Jesus speak those words that God commanded Noah to build an ark. And he built that ark and filled it with two of every kind in order to save them from the flood. How many of you remember that from Sunday school? But Noah did not wait until it started raining to build the ark. He built the ark in the desert long before the first drop of rain fell. He was ready for the calamity that was to come. Church being ready for Jesus is not just calling on him in bad times. It means calling on him in good times. Being ready for Jesus is not just praising him on your good days, but being ready for Jesus is being able to shout hallelujah, bless his holy name, even on your bad days. See, preparation does not exist in a vacuum. Being prepared is a process that requires intentionality and discipline. See, Abraham Lincoln once said, if I had eight hours to chop down a tree, I'd spend six hours sharpening my axe. John F. Kennedy once said, the time to repair the roof is when the sun is shining. We have to be ready for Jesus long before we hang the first ornament on the Christmas tree. We have to be ready for Jesus long before we sing the first line of come thou Lord expected Jesus being ready for Jesus and say if he comes right now Lord even though I'm in a, a state of imperfection I am ready for you come Lord come Lord into my life. I know I don't have it all together. I know that I'm not perfect but Lord just come 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 Lord See, a lot of folks crying, Lord, Lord, aren't saved. A lot of folks crying, Jesus, 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 are using him in order to get them out of a tight situation when they haven't done the work themselves, and that's why they're in there. So I know I'm telling the truth today. See, Jesus is not some cosmic Santa Claus or magician. He's our Lord and Savior. He did not come to get us out of a bind. He came us to save us from our sin. See, we have it twisted. The world thinks that, you know, that all we have to do is push a magic Jesus button and everything will be all right. Yes, we know that he can do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can think of and or ask, but he also tells us that we ought to occupy till he comes. That faith without works is dead, meaning you've got to get up and do something on your own. 
I've taught you a million times since I've been your pastor that you can hardly find a miracle in the Bible where somebody didn't give God something to work with. You don't have the miracle of the loaves and fish unless you have the five loaves and the two fish. There's no water turned into wine unless you have the water jar. Moses couldn't even part the Red Sea without the staff in his hand. Are you prepared? Do you have something to give God to work with? So we want miracles in our lives and our hands are as empty as they can be. Not giving God anything to work with. The widow had a mite. The prophet Elijah wanted to eat and the woman said, well, you know, I just have a little corn and a little meal. We're just going to make a few cakes and we're going to die. He said, give it to me. And the Bible says they ate for a long time. She gave him something to work with. Be prepared for Jesus is coming me, you've got to have something for God to work with. It doesn't have to be a, a lot of something, but it absolutely can't be nothing. Amen, Pastor. I know they don't want to hear it, but I'm going to tell them the truth. So the time to get ready for Jesus is coming. His first coming, his nativity, and his second coming, the parousia, is now. Somebody say now. See, the coming of Jesus as a baby or well, the second coming of Christ as the Lord of glory is a blessed event. But it's not so blessed if we're not prepared. See, our gospel lesson gives us insight as to how we ought to prepare for Jesus' arrival mentally and spiritually. Because Matthew, the 24th chapter, verses 36 through 44 falls in the midst of a larger context of Matthew, the 24th chapter. For those of you serious Bible scholars, you can compare Matthew chapter 24 with Mark chapter 13. And the basic theme of this text is the relationship between the end times and the fancy Greek word that we know about that is eschatology, the end times, and ethics. In other words, this text presents to us a question of how to live in the present considering the uncertainties of the future. How do I make it through today when I don't know what tomorrow brings? How do I operate this week not knowing what's going to happen next month? So the imperative of today's gospel lesson promotes regarding this relationship is the need for persistent watchfulness. In other words, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You don't know what's going to happen next week. But keep your eyes open. Keep your lamps trimmed and burning. Don't fall asleep at the switch. Have all of your senses tuned up and, and know what's going on around you. Have your head on a swivel so, so that when the day comes, you'll at least be awake and know how to respond to it. See, watching and knowing figure prominently in this text. Because we, as we sit here this morning, we do not know when the second coming of the Son of Man will be. But we must remain much more attentive to all that is happening around us. So in this text, Jesus offers two brief illustrations of how the moment of the Son of Man's coming will Transpire. He says in verses 40 and 41 of the text, Then two men will be in the field. One is taken and one is left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One is taken and one is left. Here Jesus speaks of two individuals. Two in all appearances are equal. Two men are in a field and two women who are grinding in a meal. On, on, on the surface, they all seem to be equal. But the surprise as we read this text is that despite every appearance of equality between the individuals in each pair, one is taken and one is not. There is no clue here why one should be chosen and the other abandoned. But the point of verses 41 and 40 and 41 are revealed to us in verse 42. 
What does he say? Watch therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. Verse 42 serves as the point of this whole section of Matthew's gospel. This is where eschatology, the end times, and ethics, what we do in the meantime, this is where those two things come together. Rather than passively wait for the coming hour, those who listen to Jesus should be alert and paying attention. Rather than to fall into the temptation of inactivity, we are called to practice active waiting. Those of you taking notes, write down active waiting. Those of you who are watching us type into the chat, active waiting, meaning as we wait, we ought to be doing something. Now, we all know Jesus is coming, right? We don't know when he's coming. So as your pastor, I could take the lazy route out. I could come here every Sunday and say, well, you know he's coming, so I'm just going to sit back. <laughs> Amen, let's go home. <laughs> come back next Sunday. Wait, well, he's coming. You know, I don't, I don't feel like kind of working today. Third week, somebody's going to call the bishop. <laughs> we have to actively wait. I still have to preach to you. You still have to pray. We still have to work. We still have to do. We don't just sit back and, and look up at the sky wondering when he's coming. We have to watch and pray and do in the meantime. That's what it means by actively waiting. In other words, we are engaged in constructive and redemptive activities while we await Jesus' return. Let me bring this home to St. John today. You may remember way back in 2019, before the pandemic, a long time ago. Here at St. John, we used to have a praise team that led the congregation in songs before the processional hymn. You all remember the processional hymn? That was, it seemed like a long time ago. We, we actually, in the old days, we used to actually line up in the back and process in. Praise the Lord. There was a time before the processional hymn that we had a praise team and all gathered together to center our minds for worship. Well, we lost that when the pandemic arrived. And we spend our time before worship now tending to the logistical challenges of producing an online broadcast. However, as I read this text, the Holy Spirit of God revealed to me that we should return to the period of devotion prior to turning on the camera. Amen? Because in so doing, we are actively waiting and preparing to enter once again into God's presence through worship. <laughs> Laughing and talking and straggling in just before 10 o'clock a.m. Help me, Holy Ghost, is not as effective as praising God before we stand to sing. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. So musicians, choir, stewards, get ready with a plan to restart our devotional period next Sunday morning, amen, as a tangible witness to actively waiting to worship, am I right about it? See, I stand before you today and declare that passively waiting does not work. Passively waiting lacks discipline. Passively waiting is not productive. Jesus calls us to active waiting as we anticipate his coming and his coming again. See, Jesus presses his claim with yet another example in the text of a thief entering the house at night. Look at verses 42 and 43. Jesus says, watch therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the householder had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have watched and would not have let his house be broken into. The text ends in verse 44, which repeats the imperative that has already been issued in verse 42. Jesus says, therefore, you also must be ready. 
For the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Now, if you look on the surface, verses 42 and 44 appear to be similar. But when you read this text in the original Greek, Greek verse 44 has an added imperative. Verse 42 says, watch therefore, or some translations say, keep awake. But verse 44 includes an emphatic second person pronoun. It says, you also must be ready. In other words, when you look at verse 44, especially in the Greek, Jesus is making it clear that his message is not for a general audience. It is directed to everyone who hears his words. In other words, Jesus is not saying, St. John, be ready. He said, Henry Curtis, be ready. Jeff Presley, be ready. Roger DuBose, be ready. Gladys Richardson, be ready. Lawrence Wilson, be ready. Cecil Perry Hanley, be ready. Michael, you better be ready, amen. You know I was going to pick on you. That each and every one of us are in this tent. He's talking to you. Not a, not a general you, a specific you. Your name is in this tent. You're the one that he's calling to be ready. See, as I thought about this passage, in the context of it being the first Sunday of Advent and the first Sunday of a new Christian year, my mind went to my service as a member of the United States Coast Guard Auxiliary. We in the Coast Guard Auxiliary are one of the largest volunteer organizations in the country, and our job as auxiliaries is to support the work and the mission of the United States Coast Guard. And the Coast Guard motto in Latin is this, Semper Paratus, which in English means always ready. We are trained that if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. I hope somebody didn't miss that. If you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. Look carefully at what Jesus says in verse 44. I want all of us to read it aloud. Open up your bulletin and read it with me. Verse 44. Therefore, you must also be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Let's read the first part again. Therefore, you also must be ready. Underline, be ready. Notice, Jesus did not say, get ready. Don't go home and say, well, what was the sermon today? Pastor Curtis preached about get ready. Uh, you get an F for the day. Be ready. There's a difference between be and get. Be ready. Everybody say be ready. I'm going to beat this in your head. I don't want you to get this wrong. Pastor Curtis didn't tell you to get ready. He said be ready. Always in a state of preparedness for Jesus' is coming because you do not know when the day will be. As preachers, we are taught that we should always be prepared to preach. A preacher should not have to get ready. A preacher ought to already be ready. It's important that the choir rehearse their pieces and coordinate their music, but there are some songs that the choir and the musicians ought to be able to sing at a moment's notice, not because of their musical ability, but because those songs are a testimony of your relationship with God. A steward or a trustee or an officer in the AME church should always be ready to pray at a moment's notice. Why? Because you're the spiritual leaders of the church. And if you have a personal prayer life, then you ought to be able to offer a public prayer to God on behalf of the people who elected you to be in those positions. If we call you to do something, but pastor, I'm not ready. You ought to be ready. You're an officer. You're a trustee. We've elected you. God has called you. It doesn't take a whole lot to say a word on behalf of God's people to the Lord. 
She is a Christian leader. Whether clergy or laity, we must always be prepared and not have to get prepared to serve. See, I was visiting at a church, it was a Baptist church some years ago, where the pastor invited me to sit in the pulpit. Now, when I go visit other churches, I like to sit out in the, in the audience. Because Jesus said, you know, you take a seat of honor for yourself. That could embarrass you. I like to just sit out, blend into the woodwork, and, and just worship. But they saw me out there and invited me up to the pulpit. And after the morning prayer, he announced, much to my surprise and my chagrin, that I would be preaching the sermon that morning. I had no prior notice. I had no previous preparation, but as a preacher of the gospel, I stood before God and God's people and stood there and proclaimed what thus saith the Lord. I've been called to preach, I've been equipped to preach, and even though I might not have had all of my Greek words and Latin words and Hebrew words today, I can call on the word, the word that was with God, the word that is God, the word that became flesh and dwelt among the people. I might not be able to tell you a whole lot of academic things without the preparation, but I can tell you that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that who whoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I can tell you that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I can stand and give a word for the Lord. See, one of the problems with the church today is that we spend so much time getting ready because we fail to interpret Jesus' words in today's text to always be ready. See, Jesus' words call us into a time of active waiting. Say it again, class. Active waiting. See, being passive will not do. Getting ready is our theological task this Advent season. Rather, Jesus calls us to be ready. Getting ready is not our job. Our job this Advent is being ready. He says in verse 42, Watch therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. And because you do not know the day of his arrival, Jesus says in verse 44, Therefore, you also must be ready. Church, I've said all of that to you this morning to simply say, wake up. Don't fall asleep at the switch. Keep awake and stand your watch. Don't get ready, rather be ready. And you know how to get ready, don't you? The songwriter put it this way, he said, would you flee from sin and serve the Lord? Be ready when he comes. He will soon appear with his reward. Be ready when he comes. It's not his will that you be lost. Be ready when he comes. Would you save your soul at any cost? Be ready when he comes. He goes on to say, be ready, be ready. Be ready when he comes. Be, be ready, be ready, be ready when he comes. In this Advent season, we've been called by Jesus to be ready to stand up for justice, to be ready to speak up for righteousness, to be ready to grow up toward holiness, to be ready to pray up for those who need you, to be ready to build up the body of Christ, to be ready to serve up the goodness of the Lord, to be ready to rise up and be a witness in season and out of season. To be ready to live up to your calling and God-given ability. To be ready to give up the things that would take you away to God. To be ready to open up and welcome the presence of Jesus. This isn't the time to get ready. This is the time to be ready. To be ready to stand for Jesus. To be ready to help the poor. To be ready to help the children. To be ready to reach out to the elder. To be ready to shout hallelujah, to be ready to lift somebody up, to be ready to be soft, to be ready to be light. Don't go home and get ready. You ought to already be ready. Yeah. Watch 
watch therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. Therefore, you also must be ready. It's Advent. Adventum is about to happen. The king is on his way. Be ready, church, for his arrival. Thanks be to God. Amen. We pray that that message was a blessing to you, and if it were, we invite you to pray this prayer with us right now. Lord Jesus Christ, come into my life. Live your life in me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Forgive me, Lord, when I passively waited, but now by your grace and by your Spirit, I have the opportunity to actively wait and be ready in preparation for your arrival as the babe in Bethlehem and in anticipation for your second coming. Wash me with your blood. Create in me a clean heart. Put a new and right spirit within me. Set my feet on the golden pathway of righteousness and lease of salvation and everlasting life. This and all things I ask in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. If you're in our sanctuary and you want to accept Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, or if you've already accepted Christ but you are not affiliated with the congregation, we offer St. John to you today. You can walk down any one of these aisles and give me as pastor your hand, and more importantly, give Christ as Savior in your heart. If you're worshiping with us online and you want to accept Christ, then please let us know by writing to us at St. John AME Church, 2261 East 40th Street. Cleveland, Ohio, 44103. You may also call us at 216-431-2560 or send us an email, stjohnamechurchcle.org. Let us know that you've accepted Christ or that you want to affiliate with us here at St. John and we will reach out to you and receive you into the life of our fellowship. Let us stand to our feet as persons respond to the invitation and as our choir leads us in song.
God and your love and support of St. John AME Church. Please make your check out to St. John AME. You may mail that to 2261 East 40th Street, Cleveland, Ohio, 44103. You may also go to our website, stjohnamechurchcle.org, and click the Givelify Digital Giving button and give to St. John Digital. Let us now give our tithes and offerings to Almighty God. a.m. and you may access that on our uh, YouTube channel or through our Facebook channel. We thank our choir for uh, sponsoring a special event on December 17th from 10 to 1. Uh, come visit Santa and Santa will come to St. John in the Fellowship Hall. Donations are being accepted and please see any choir member and again we thank the St. John Choir for their leadership and sponsorship of this event. 2023 calendar requests are out. Uh, there are items in the uh, overflow when you may get your calendar requests. Please get those back to me uh, by December 18th so that we can construct the 2023 calendar. Very important announcement uh, due to the action of the church on last week that our Christmas Day worship, Sunday, December 25th, will be virtual only, and you may obtain that on the YouTube and Facebook channel. Uh, there we will not be in person on December the 25th. Also, our dues campaign is upon us. Please be sure to donate $20 to help support the work that we do for social justice through our relationship with GCC, the Greater Cleveland Congregations. And also, GCC is having a public hearing for justice for children to end uh, discretionary youth bindovers on December 6th and 7th at, uh, at Olivet. You may access that through Zoom, and the link is with you. And also, the Adams Board of Cuyahoga County is here to serve you. We thank and praise God for each and every one of you. And we also want to acknowledge uh, 
special guest with us, Brother Kyle, who's on the bass guitar. God bless you. Welcome to St. John, and God bless you, and thank you for your service today. Amen. Amen. Our musicians don't passively play, they actively play. Amen. Amen. Let us stand for our closing song. celebrating and honoring our pastor for his 10 years of service and his 51st birthday on next Sunday. So please bring your gifts, bring your donation, bring whatever you'd like to give to him on next Sunday, and we will present to him immediately after service on next Sunday. So again, bring those gifts next Sunday. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Brother Pressy. And now may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now, henceforth, and forevermore. being with us today. Have a great rest of the day, a great week, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>